Okay, as you've probably seen from the title, this video is on the EPQ, the Extended Project Qualification, a 5,000 word essay or a 2,000 word essay and an artifact that you make. For a bit of background, I submitted mine in March of this year, 2020. Um, I got my results in August. If you wanna see my live reaction, I think it's that side up there, it should pop up there. Yeah, but I got 48 out of 50, which equated to an A star. So in this video, I'm just gonna be giving you all of the tips and things I learned along the way that helped me to get the A star and ultimately to help you get there yourself. Now EPQ is quite a broad thing and it can be quite daunting, especially when you're first starting. At my school, it was actually compulsory, but I think at most schools it's optional. It has been really beneficial for me. Like it showed me a lot of critical skills that I've really been able to exploit in my personal statement, applying to places, and it's even given me reduced offers for pretty much all of the universities I've applied for that I've got offers from so far. So it is really helpful and I'd strongly recommend doing it, but obviously it can be a bit time consuming and just some unnecessary stress. So we're gonna make that process a bit easier. So the first thing that I just really liked about the EPQ and the kind of is the main selling point is you can do the EPQ on literally anything. And I'm kind of living proof of the limits of what you can do. So I did lucid dreaming. Now lucid dreaming is a really abstract topic. If you haven't already kind of have heard of it it's basically the ability to control your dream and become conscious in it usually when you're in a dream you're not conscious everything's a bit blurry and you can't really remember stuff or do anything but as soon as you activate the conscious mind everything becomes really vivid you can control everything and it literally feels like waking life so this was sick to explore and i actually explored its practical uses for developing real world skills i got lucid a few times i did loads of cool experiments i did an insane amount of research and to be honest it was really kind of like a passion project i really enjoyed doing it the only thing that sort of felt like work was actually writing it all kind of getting organized planning doing all of that but i'm here to kind of make sure it seems like less of a chore and that you can just smash it out easy before we get that this channel is basically self-improvement lifestyling and just being a better version of yourself i cover loads of things like academics fitness finance self-help things and just basically being better being more motivated being more driven being more clinical and just living a better life so if that sounds like something you want to do please drop a subscribe maybe even drop a like and yeah let's get on with the video Oh, and I'm also going to be linking my entire project, entire logbook, and Gantt chart in the description below if you want to check it out. Cool. Okay, right. Tip number one is just get organized. Now, if there was one single thing that got me an A star, it would be the fact that I got organized. Now, by this, I mean don't leave it until the last minute like most people do. Almost immediately, go home and decide what you're going to write a topic on. This probably took me about a week to nail the topic of lucid dreaming and maybe a couple of days to decide on the title. Doing a brief scan online to see if there was actually going to be enough information for me to be able to write a project on it. Then, I strongly recommend writing a brief structure of the project you will write and making a Gantt chart that is based on this structure that you've planned. Doing it early and making a tangible plan demonstrates to your supervisor, who submits your marks, your organization and clinical approach. It doesn't matter if it's rough, it gets you started and that's all that is needed. Also, any changes you make after that can be written about in your logbook to get you easy marks, so it's a win-win. Okay, right, I just thought I'd quickly show you my Gantt chart to give you a bit of an idea of the structure and what sort of thing you're gonna be aiming for. Now, I actually changed my Gantt chart a few times because I ended up not quite keeping up with all of it making changes moving the bits around but obviously that was reflected in my logbook like i said but also i made multiple gantt charts so wherever i'd make a change i'd make a new gantt chart so you could kind of see the progression over time this is my gantt chart so it's quite simple so ooh, this is it from a distance it looks quite confusing but it's pretty simple when you actually get down to it on the left side these are the things that i need to do so the tasks for the EPQ. and on the top are dates so each one of these at the top is just a week a week in time up until the final deadline which i believe for me was 23rd of march i started way back in september cool now you just make kind of like a brief plan and where you want to do one of these tasks you just box that in in the time and you kind of plan your time from now until the deadline i gave myself a lot of leniency towards the end so that i could overrun if i needed to in fact the first iteration of mine left a fair bit of space near the bottom cool so anyway things that i included were tasks like deciding on my theme deciding on a question initial research things like that and then actually writing it so researching and then writing 
each part. So here you've got my actual project. I'd write each part and then schedule in when I wanted to have finished that part by. And that just gave me kind of like a general structure and thing to work towards as I was going through my project. And it was really, really effective. Now, as I said before, that is all going to be linked down in the description below if you do want to have a look. Get a bit of an idea and maybe even use it to structure your own project. Nice. On with the video. Tip number two, choose a topic that you're actually passionate about or that you're actually going to enjoy writing about. At the end of the day, you're going to be spending the next three, four, five, even six months, even more working on this project. So make sure it's something that you're actually going to be finding enjoyable and actually going to be wanting to research. Nice. Yeah, again, for me, I really enjoyed lucid dreaming. Like I thought it was sick. So I didn't actually mind putting in the work and doing the research because it was for something that I genuinely had an interest in and I genuinely wanted to find more out about. Does that make sense? So so yeah, I strongly recommend that. Okay, tip number three, the logbook is your friend. To get marks in the EPQ, you have two items, your actual project and your logbook. Actually three, because you've also got the presentation. Now there are no set marks for any of them. You just have to be able to demonstrate the marked skills in one of them. For example, if you demonstrate good critical analysis in your logbook, it takes the pressure off the written piece and vice versa. My biggest tip here is just to keep a log of everything. Write down exactly why you make changes to your plan. Write down why you change your title why you are cutting half of your structure out. This demonstrates your problem solving ability, critical selection and planning skills, all of which form a significant part of the mark scheme. What you write in your project is less significant and likely less weighted than the reasoning you show in your logbook. So basically just record any changes that you make and think of a reason for why you did it. Even if it isn't true, you get marks for the justification. Okay, now again, you can go into the description below and have a look at my entire logbook, like literally everything that I wrote about my projects, like all of the details, all of the slight changes and all of the justifications of why I did certain things. And what might actually be helpful is it even gives you a complete breakdown of where I got all of my marks. So I got 10 marks for management out of 10, nine out of 10 for use of resources, 19 out of 20 for the development and realization of different ideas and 10 out of 10 for the review. So the review, the management is all there you can see that you can go and have a look and you can explore exactly how i got those marks but you can also just see the examples so for example for my record of initial ideas i just brain dumped i literally said everything that i possibly could i gave ideas for why i chose the initial title how that developed how it changed and then how i took on board the comments i made from my supervisor and the modifications i made as a result then i even go further in the planning review and talk about everything that i possibly can about the current structure of my project Project, how I changed it, what I did to develop it, and just everything to do with the structure, what led me there, and how I developed and turned it into the form that it is currently. Cool, let's continue. Okay, tip number four is just be consistent. The EPQ is easy and perfectly manageable if, just like everything else, you are consistent with it. Schedule just a few hours a week to sit down and follow your Gantt plan. Then, if you can do more, do more. Consistency allowed me to write 12,000 words almost two months before the deadline without ever stressing about it. Even if you don't manage to meet the deadlines, just explain why and move it. Then, again, you can write this in your logbook. You keep to all of the deadlines in your plan and any that you changed you can justify it to get more marks. Okay, now tip number five is quite simple. It's just don't stress over source reliability. Now, you don't have to use valid sources to get a top mark. Just arrange with analysis. By this, I mean just have quite a few sources and write a short analysis for the key ones. For my topic, barely any of the sources were completely reliable as it was a very subjective subject. I just had a large range and then at the end, I wrote a short analysis of the first 10. That was more than enough. And finally, tip six, is don't stress the presentation. As long as you have shown all of the key skills in the logbook and project, the presentation is nothing to worry about. Just talk about the process and your findings. Keep slides simple with minimal text and use it as a springboard into speech, almost like topic ideas. The slides should guide your train of thought, not replace it. Smile, be enthusiastic, and pretend it's all a simulation that you will come out of in any second. 
That way you can talk freely with no fear of judgment. Okay, and those are my six tips to get you an A star in the EPQ. Now I followed these, I got organized, I planned, I was critical and I stayed consistent and that got me the A star. 48 out of 50 marks and the evidence to show for it. Now I know obviously EPQ is quite a big thing and it's not just gonna be these six tips that get you there. So if you do wanna have a look at all of the stuff that I did in the description, so that's my presentation, my actual project, the logbook and my Gantt chart, then feel free. I personally always find it really helpful to look at other people's stuff and find out what they've done that's allowed them to get the best marks. So maybe it might be good for you too. I don't know. Otherwise, that is it for today's video. If you did enjoy, don't forget to drop a like, drop a subscribe. And know that on this channel, I've got loads of other videos on GCSE, A-level, how to get like nines, A-stars, on fitness, betterment, and just overall living a better life. Cool. Otherwise, I'll see you on Friday for the next video, which is A-level student in lockdown episode three. See you later. I live inside my own world of make-believe.